Hi everyone, it's Andrea here and I'm going to give you a review of The Complete Jack the Ripper by Donald Rumbelow. Now, as you saw in my wrap-up, I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. And I want to explain a little bit of the reason why. So that just check is coming off. Anyway, so this book was first published in, I just looked it up and I can't remember, 1975 and then was expanded on in 1987 and this is the 1987 edition. He basically takes the crimes and sets them in their historical setting and he examines the evidence, comprehensive and scrupulously, disposes of a number of theories and legends and relates the murders to popular literature and later similar sex crimes. The reason this is one of the must books in the Ripperologist's um, canon and archive and one that must be referred to is because Donald Rumblow was at the time of writing a police officer at in the city of london police force city of london police london if you don't know has two police forces there is the metropolitan police that is based out of new scotland yard which is the main force in the mix that does most of london and then you've got the city police force which covers one about one square mile and it is literally the city and they're called the city police force and they have their boundaries now in 1888 the fourth canonical uh, murder occurred in the city of london's jurisdiction which was mitre square it was catherine eddowes murder the other four took place within the um metropolitan police district so the two police forces didn't work together after eddowes murders and in fact they clashed several times which was a bit of a problem and evidence in the case was destroyed because of this and it is such a shame um so he takes us through basically the in the basically the crimes um london and what it was like to live in london at the time if you weren't rich um like i said all crimes through to mary kelly's the letters that the police received from the various various people whether or not they were from the actual killer or not we don't know it's unlikely there's possibly, possibly one or two that were. And then he takes us through a lot of the suspects. Now these have changed over the years, but uh, some of the suspects that he uh, takes us through here are Montague J. Druitt, who did actually uh, commit suicide not long after the Miller's Court murder and was found in the Thames on, I believe, New Year's Eve. But that's not to say he killed himself because he was the Ripper. We don't know why he did that. He didn't leave a note. Then there is... Who have we got? Um, Kosminski, uh, Michael Ostrog. These are all various suspects that have been put forward over the year. Um, the Lodger, <laughs> which is just what it's known as because that was a fictional character that became the Alfred Hitchcock movie. Um, we have... I'm uh, just getting through the pages now. Lots of them. Obviously, there was a, a man named Dr. Stanley, Sir William Gull, Prince Albert Victor, Walter Sickart, so many of them. Um, uh, that uh, George Chapman, Neil Cream, uh, uh, Frederick Demon. There's also a good selection of photographs. Um, I'm not going to show you the crime scene photographs of Mary Kelly because you can find them and the other post-mortem photographs of the victims anywhere on the internet. I'm not going to put that on my channel. I don't think it's appropriate. Personally, they don't bother me. I can look at them at uh, a dispassioned and forensic view because I've been looking at this case for a few years now, but they are not the prettiest. Now, Donald Rumbelow, before we go on to the rest of the book, also allegedly owns a knife that may well have belonged to Jack the Ripper. The legend has it belonged to Jack the Ripper. It's a post-mortem knife that is actually broken. Here's a picture of it now. Now this picture of this knife also appears in the other Ripper book, which was in my wrap up. Um, so they've lifted it out of this book and put it in there. Uh, and the story behind how he came across and obtained this knife is contained within this book. Um, if it's the, is it the knife that Jack the Ripper wielded? We'll never know. But there you go. Um, yeah, it, then after the suspects, 
it takes you through stage productions, um, films, but apparently there was a Jack the Ripper musical. There's actually been a few Jack the Ripper Ripper's musicals. In fact, when I was at college the year before I started, they did a musical called Our Jack, which was based in Whitechapel by Kirk Foster. And this was about, wasn't about the Ripper, but it was about the plight of the, the women living in Whitechapel at the time and how it affected their day-to-day -day lives. And then after that, we've got what they call Beyond the Grave, which is further sex killers. Um, so Peter Sutcliffe, um, Peter Curtin, who was the Dusseldorf uh, Ripper. Then there's Jack the Stripper, who they never caught. And of course, you know, yeah, Peter Sutcliffe, never good. You notice a lot of these killers' names are Peter. Peter Sutcliffe, Peter Curtin, could barely, no, don't, let's not go on conspiracies. No conspiracy theories in here. In fact, the only conspiracy theories are clearly debunked. This is definitely worth picking up. I had been looking for it on eBay, but I did want a hard copy, a hardback uh, edition, which I couldn't get on eBay fairly cheaply. I picked this up for five quid in Hale and Why, which is why it's one of my favorite places to go. I totally recommend this book if you're into serial killers and Jack the Ripper, because Jack the Ripper is the most famous of the British serial killers, other than the Yorkshire Ripper, who didn't actually rip people. He did stab them with a, a Phillips screwdriver, but he didn't really rip them. The reason he was named after Jack the Ripper is because he tended to go for prostitutes rather than other people that he did kill innocents, uh, non-prostitutes, not that prostitutes aren't innocent, of course they are. Just gonna show you this one very quickly. I mentioned that this one was only a two out of five. Again, this one doesn't actually show Mary Kelly's uh, picture, which I'm glad. There are a lot of the old, newspaper drawings which is interesting um that's francis tumblety he was a, he's another suspect of being jack the ripper there were so many of them over the years oh i wanted to focus and then yeah so yeah, this is a nice one just to have in a collection if you're going to collect the books like i do i don't have many i've still got four or five to read I've got about 10 or so up there, but I, I, I am collecting them very, very slowly. So, yeah, don't worry about that one. It's not that brilliant. But uh, my advice would be to, if you are interested, do pick up the Complete Jack the Ripper by Donald Rumbleau. Definitely recommend it. Five out of five stars. Right, so that's it for this review. If you've liked it, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, leave a comment if you've read it and if you if you think, or if you've got a Jack the Ripper book you think I should be reading, let me know, I might have read it. If not, if I have, we can have a conversation and if not, I'd probably pick it up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.